Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakah Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully let I came out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line and your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American. One is the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. A Shalom. It's your brother Halaki from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah with another lesson. And this is going to be more prophecy going into uh, us being at complete rest and peace in our kingdom to debunk the false doctrine that the Bishop Nathaniel of the IOIC is spewing. Yes, because you have the Bishop Nate Nathaniel of the IOIC spewing his madness that after 1,000 years in the kingdom of heaven that Esau is going to rise up against us and that's not according to prophecy man that's not according to what the most High has spoken so the spirit has you know many brothers including myself going into the prophecies to show you what it really is you see this guy Nate is a false prophet and the most High is going to deal with him if he doesn't repent man and all you of his congregation that's still following those wicked ass doctrines and philosophies that he's pushing forth the most High is going to deal with you as well but we're going to start right here in Hebrews 4 and 9. It says what? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of the Most High. And that's all according to prophecy. When the Most High says that we're going to be at rest in the kingdom of heaven, that's what it's going to be. It's not going to be a span of 1,000 years of being at rest. And then the Edomites are going to come from the Caucasus mountain to, mountains to wage war with us in our kingdom. That's not prophecy, man. That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. The Most High promised us an everlasting rest, and that's what it's going to be. Now, when we go to Jeremiah 46 and 27, it says what? And it precepts right here. Another precept, we're going to go to it. This is uh, Jeremiah 46 and 27. It says what? But fear, but fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And this is what we're in the process in right now. The remnant is being uh, uh, quickened and given this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, and we are being prepared to receive salvation from the land of our captivities once the Lord Yahweh Shah makes his second coming. All according to prophecy. We're going to be gathered from all the lands that we have been scattered to. You see, it says what? And Jacob shall return and be in rest. And at ease, and none shall make him afraid. This goes into Yahweh Shah's kingdom. That's when we're going to be at risk. That's when we're going to be at ease. There won't come a time after 1,000 years that we won't be at rest or ease anymore because the Edomites are coming to wage war against us. That's bullshit, man. This is the final time that we will have to ever be in a state of being warred against by the heathen nations. This won't be a thing in the kingdom of heaven. You see? Let's get this in the NLT. It says what? Translation comparison. Let's get it in the NLT. Man, if I want to get it in the GNT too, because I got it right here. Let me find this right quick. That's what Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46 and 26. Yep, right here. That's perfect. So this is Isaiah 46, I'm, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 46, Salakia. Jeremiah 46 and 27 in the NLT, it says what? But do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel, for I will bring you home again from distant lands. Where is our home? The land of Israel, the land of, formerly known as the land of Canaan. That area that spans from the Nile River to the Euphrates River. You see? That's the land that was promised unto our forefather Abraham and to his seed after him for an everlasting possession. That's where Yahweh Shah is coming to take us back to, you see, once he saves us and we come down out of heaven. 
it goes on to say, For I will bring you home again from distant lands. You and it's like and your children will return from, from their exile. Israel will return to a life of peace and quiet, and no one will terrorize them. That's point blank period. If after 1,000 years, we're going to be terrorized by the Edomites coming down out of the Caucasus Mountains to wage war with, with weapons they've manufactured as they were hiding in the Caucasus Mountains, that will let us know that what? That's not a life of peace and quiet, that we're going to be terrorized. So that will contra that's contradicting what the Most High actually told us is going to happen when we go into the kingdom. You see? The most I say is no one would terrorize us. And that means from the start of the kingdom to forevermore, we'll never be terrorized ever again. Starting with that first domain, that, that 1,000 years of getting everything reestablished as it's supposed to be, as it was supposed to be from the beginning, we would never be terrorized any any time in the kingdom of heaven. Nate, you are going off, man. You see? That first domain is going to be a, a domain of getting everything reestablished back under the order of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And after that, everything is going to be smooth for us forevermore. It won't be a point to where Esau is going to run off and get out of captivity. How so, somehow he, he has the strength to get out of captivity from under us as we're in our glory. To run off to the Caucasus Mountains. To manufacture weapons and ammunition. To come down out of the Caucasus Mountains. To come to the land of Israel to wage war against us. No man. That does not add up to what prophecy says. Let's see what it says in the GNT. This is Jeremiah 46. Jeremiah 46 and 27 in the GNT it says what my people do not be afraid matter of fact let's do let's do it like this so you can actually see what I'm reading because I forgot I had it right here let's do this let's do Jeremiah and 27 in the GNT right where is it did I pass it I think I passed it there we go 27 it says what Yahweh will save his people verse 27 says what my people do not be afraid People of Israel do not be terrified. I will rescue you from that faraway land, from the land where you are prisoners. You will come back home and live in peace, and you will be secure, and no one will make you afraid. But according to Bishop Nate, that's not going to happen. Basically, the Bishop Nate is calling the Most High liar, because according to Bishop Nate, according to Bishop Nate's breakdown. After 1,000 years in the kingdom of heaven, Esau is coming to wage war with us. So that would completely negate what the prophecy is saying. When we go home, back to our land, are we not going to establish the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom that the Most High has promised unto our forefathers? Yes or no? Yes, we are. Is this not the promise that the Most High has, uh, I mean, the kingdom that the Most High has promised to give us a kingdom of peace, of rest, of righteousness? Yes, it is. That rest that the Most High prom promised to give us, we're finally coming into it. So you're telling me that in this rest the Most High has given us, according to what he's promised us, Esau is going to come and wage war with us after 1,000 years of getting his kingdom established? No, man. No. That 1,000 years, you see, when he was shackled and chained and the bottomless pit goes into him being what? That's when he was in that, those Caucasus Mountains. When he was loose from that prison, that lower state that he was suffering in, in the Caucasus Mountains, 
what happened the renaissance the rebirth that was that was centuries ago this man is not going to escape kept escape out of captivity from under us in our glory and all in the fullness of our strength to go to the Caucasus mountains to hide out to make weapons of war to wage war on us man no when we go home but when we're, when we're saved from the land of our captivity we're going to be taken up into heaven we're going to be changed brought into the second covenant given those new righteous immortal bodies we're going to be perfect fully tied back into the most high God Yahweh you see once that crowning ceremony done, that ceremony that we read about in 2nd Ezra chapter 2, we're going to come down out of heaven as it tells you in Revelation 21. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do at that point in time? Let's go to prophecy. This is Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. We are going to take the kingdom, and it's going to be a hostile Israelite takeover. And what are we going to go? What, what are we going to do in the earth? We're going to go throughout the earth, putting all the heathen nations in shackles and chains, including the Edomites. And we're going to have complete supremacy and dominion, and we're going to on the earth forevermore. We're going to, it's going to be complete Israelite domination. No one will begin again from under our grasp. No one will begin from under our authority or under our rule. Esau doesn't have that type of power, man. So, like so yeah. This is what it's going to be when we come down, man. We're going to have complete supremacy over the heathen nations. Complete, com complete power and control over the heathen. They will have no say-so in the matter. They will have no type of authority, just like we went into last night. In the lesson I did, uh... uh Going into the same topic, just pulling out biblical prophecies to show you what it's really going to be. This bullshit that Nate is spewing is, is just that, man. Bullshit. When we take the kingdom, it's going to be in our possession forever. And no heathen will have any say-so or type, any type of power to get from under our control. Just like the heathen now don't have any power to get from under the control of Esau. Esau is running this shit because he's in his, in his blessing. When we come into our blessing, it's going to, hey, we're going we're gonna to have it locked down completely forevermore you see and you spewing that madness man because more than likely you didn't took that bag and your handlers are giving you a script to go by to try to give the Edomite nation some type of hope you have no hope as an Edomite you're done you devils are going into captivity and, and, and after that first dominion that first 1000 years of the kingdom of heaven you Edomites are going to be eradicated and chased out of the world, man, according to biblical prophecy. That's just what it is. Let's get this other one in Daniel. Oh, not Daniel. Uh, what was it? Isaiah, no, Jeremiah 30. Real quick. Says the same thing, man. Look at that. Jeremiah 30 and 10 says what? Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Neither be just made, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. But once again, according to Bishop Nate, after 1,000 years of the kingdom of heaven, Esau is going to come up out of the Caucasus Mountains to, 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 wage war, to wage war upon the Israelites and make us afraid. Come on, man. No. No, no, no. That's, that's not true. That's a false doctrine that Nate is pushing. If he don't repent, the most I'm going to destroy his ass, man. And that's just what it is. Let's, look, let's get some cross-references. Let's see what else we can find. Yeah, let's go to this real quick. Look, let, let's, let's look right here. We'll start at verse 8. It says, Isaiah 41 and 8. It says, But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy power. I will strengthen thee, yeah, I will help thee, yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And that's what's going to be done for the Israelites, man. Not, not only in the kingdom, but on this side here. The, the remnant 
hey, we're going to receive, Lord willing, we be a part of that number. We're going to receive that, that uh, protection from on high because of the fear of the Lord that we're walking in, man. And Yahweh Shai is going to uphold us. That's the right hand of the Most High's righteousness. Verse 11 says what? Behold, all they that were sensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. This is what's coming upon our enemies, especially the Edomites. The Edomites are going to be as nothing. They're going to perish. Once again, their entire family tree is going to be plucked out of the earth. They won't have a chance to rebel against us in the kingdom of heaven because they're going to be eradicated after that first 1,000 years, that first dominion. Verse 12 says what? Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. Who's contended with us above all other nations? They, the Edomites are, beginning with Amalek, the top international banking families. This is what they're going to... This is what they're going to be brought into, man. You see? Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. This is what the Most High's prophecy calls for, for all the nations that are, that are going to try to war against us. And the, and the chief nation that's warring against us is the nation of Edom. When it's all said and done, Esau is going to be wiped out. After that first dominion in the kingdom of heaven, Esau is going to be annihilated from the earth. Not He's not going to go into the Caucasus mountains to hide out, to manufacture weapons and ammunition, then to, and come and wage war against us in the promised land, in our glory. No, man. You see? Verse 13 says, What? For I am Yahweh thy power. For I, Yahweh, thy power, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and you men of Israel, I will help thee, saith Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, thy Redeemer, and the Holy One of Israel. This is what it is, man. Na Bishop Nathaniel of the IUIC and his entire, uh, his, uh, his men up under him and that whole congregation, they on some bullshit, man. We are going home, and when we go home, we're going to be at peace, and no war, no no heathen will wage war against us, man. Oh, man. Because what does it tell us? Violence. Let's get that real quick. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. And 18 says what? Violence shall know, but then this is a vision of the kingdom of heaven. This is what it's going to be when we go back home, man. Isaiah 60 and 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. So, so when is Esau gonna? So, so what, what's going on, man? The most I said, violence shall no more be heard in our land. So, so where is Esau coming with all this, these weapons of war to wage war against us? This goes into us returning home and being at peace and being at, and being quiet and no one terrorizing us again. You see? Everything that Bishop Nate is spewing over there at the IUIC is a complete contradiction to what the Most High has said, man. You see? Let's see what it says in the GNT. Isaiah 16 and GNT. Isaiah 16 and 18. Isaiah 6, oh shit, you know what, once again, I got it right here, so I like it, Isaiah 60, and 18, Isaiah 16 and 18 says, uh, so like it, Isaiah 16 and 18 says, what, the sounds of violence will be heard no more. Destruction will not shatter your country again. I will protect you and defend you like a wall. You will praise me because I have saved you. So, so you telling me that up under the Most High's protection in the kingdom of heaven, when we're in the fullness of our glory, Esau is coming to wage war against us? You see how it doesn't add up? Nate is a false prophet, and he's been that way for many years now, man. And if you're still over there following him, hey, that's the Most High giving you over to strong delusion. To be destroyed. Like I made another video last night. If the blind lead the blind, 
both shall fall into a ditch. And this is what's happening with Nate and his congregation, man. You see? And I wrap it up with this one, man. Isaiah 8 and 20 says what? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And there is no light in, in the Bishop Nate and the IUIC, man. You might have some sincere believers over there. And they're going to come up out of it because it's the most eyes will. But for the rest of y'all, man, hey, this man is going to lead you to uh, great destruction. Point blank, period. Hey, so with that, I'm going to end it by giving all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopefully that I get out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba,